Make a covenant between you and God, a covenant between you and the devil, a covenant between you and fellow men. For a covenant with the Lord, there is no problem. But if you break it, there is a problem. But when you make a covenant with the enemy, there is a bank in the spirit world where all evil covenants are kept. Whether it is a conscious affair or it's not a conscious affair does not matter. But then these covenants are binding. Let me tell you a few facts about covenants before we go on. Covenants can last forever except it is broken. Covenants can influence the life of a person and its offspring. The covenant can even have effect on unborn children. A child may suffer from the covenant broken by his parents. Satan will never forget covenants and is ready to enforce it upon current and future generations. In Genesis chapter 17, Genesis 17 14, Genesis 17 14 says, And the uncircumcised man child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that so he shall be cut off from his people. He had broken my covenant. So, covenant violation is always a punishable offense. Covenant violation is a punishable offense. And there are dangers in violating covenants. If we open to the book of Joshua chapter 9, I just want to pick up one example in scripture to make you understand what we're saying. Joshua chapter 9. Let's read from verse 15. Joshua 9 from 15. Are we there? Joshua 9 15. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them. That league means covenant them. To let them leave. And the princes of the congregation swear unto them. And it came to pass at the end of the three days, after they had made a league or covenant with them, that they had that they were their neighbors and they dwelt among them. And the children of Israel journeyed and came to their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gib- Gibeon, Shepherah, Beroth, and Kerajerim. And the children of Israel smote them not. Because the princes of the congregation are sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel. And all the congregation murmured against the princes. These people, the Gibeonites, they came to Joshua. And Joshua made a covenant with them. And they swore in the name of the God of Israel that they will not kill these people, the Gibeonites. The covenant of peace was made with the Gibeonites by the forefathers of, of Israel. But 1,100 years later, a king called Saul violated that covenant. 1,100 years later, one king called Saul violated the covenant. What did he do? In 2 Samuel chapter 24, 2 Samuel 24, verse 2. In 2 Samuel 24, 2. I read from verse 1, sorry. And again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And he moved David against them to go, say, go and number Israel and Judah. For the king said to Joab, the captain of hosts which was with them, go now through all the tribes of Israel from Dan even to Beersheba, and number the people that I may know the number of the people. And David went ahead and did this. Many people died. As a result of this activity of David, nobody could tell why what moved David to begin to do these kind of things. And then later there were three years of famine. And as the famine was going on, the people began to wonder what is causing this problem. The Lord had to refer them back that it is because of Saul that killed the Gibeonites. So Saul killed the Gibeonites 1,100 years later. And problem began to happen after that time. And until the Gibeonites themselves killed some children of Saul, then the trouble just continued. When covenants are violated, even before God, there is a serious problem. 
If somebody now makes a mistake, or the forefathers made a mistake, and they entered into covenants with the devil, they promised the devil, we will not do this, we will not do that. And somebody goes to break those covenants. Then trouble begins. Trouble that the person does not sometimes understand. And you don't know what's causing the trouble. When a covenant with the devil is violated, it can bring one into slavery and suffering. It can shorten one's life. It can attract poverty and lack. It can lead to madness. It can bring oppression and torment. It can hamper progress and success. It can lead to all kinds of terrible problems. It can attract unending trouble and unending sorrows. It can attract incurable diseases. If the covenant with the enemy has now been violated. So much for that. The problem now comes when a person has unconsciously been put into a covenant or the forefathers have entered a covenant and you did not know that they ever entered any covenant but you are breaking the covenant. If in a family they have covenanted that nobody in this family should serve another god. Everybody in this family is dedicated to an idol. And somebody now gets born again in that family. By being born again, by shifting from whatever idol it was to Jesus, you've broken a covenant. And so there will be a reaction. You've violated the covenant. There will be a reaction against that person. This is the reason why so many people misbehave. Sometimes you don't know why they are misbehaving. They are doing what the covenants don't do. There could be a covenant in a family that, well, in this family, women here don't get married to anybody. A woman in this family are supposed to be prostitutes on the streets. All of a sudden, a sister there gets married. By entering to that marriage, you have just broken a covenant. Then the mystery of the covenant violation moves in. And trouble starts. And this is the origin of many stubborn situations that many people face. A sister tried to pass school certificate several times and she failed. So a mother who is a marine person now took some sacrifices, took some live corks and some yam, some rice, and threw them into the river as a sacrifice to make her pass. And truly, that year that she did so, this lady passed in flying colors. But the rule was that every year the woman should be bringing fresh animals, food, all those things to come and worship the river. So the mother told the daughter, so this is the river that made you pass your exam. So immediately you start to walk. I won't be coming again. You'll be bringing the cocks and the food yourself. And the lady went to the university, graduated as a lawyer. She was doing these things while she was even in the university. She started work and she was still doing it. All of a sudden, either she forgot or she refused, she stopped. And then problems started. Everywhere she went, they sacked her. Every work she did, she made mistakes. She ran to church and started praying. Every time she prayed, oh Lord, I don't know why I'm going through this. She will see a river flowing across her until she now remembers. She ran back home. The mother said, hey, well, you Lagos people, you know, I told you to be putting the, to be doing sacrifice for this river. You have refused. That's what is happening now. She forgot the covenant, but the demon in the water did not forget. Immediately she violated it, the punishment moved in. A lot of people are passing through terrible sufferings today because there is a covenant they have broken. However, unconsciously, but it is still a violation. There are plenty of things that we do that quietly push us in a covenant and we just think that it will just disappear by itself. An oath can be taken. And you don't realize that what you've taken is a covenant. Once you make that oath, you are under obligation to keep it no matter what happens. Once you break that oath, then it will open doors to several terrible things. When a husband and wife forms a covenant of marriage and a party begins to break it, the violation of that covenant releases some demons to cause trouble. A person used to belong to a gang of thieves before he got born again. And the thieves made a covenant. If they catch any of us, nobody should talk. 
and they cut themselves with the blade, put their blood into a container, added alcohol to that container, and they all drank it to form a covenant. One of the thieves now got born again. He had forgotten about the covenant he made with the fellow thieves. Now everything he has was stolen. In fact, the one that now broke the camel back so that they even stole his wife. It was then he now started praying. So you have entered into a covenant with thieves. You have violated the covenant. This is why this has happened to you. The kind of prayers we are going to pray today. If you pray against unconscious evil covenants and it's not there, you have not lost anything. But if you do not pray and it's there, it's a source of real trouble. Some form occupational groups and they make an oath. Say so we are all shoemakers. We are all uh, fish sellers. We are all the canteen runners. And so we form a covenant. And then the person wants to break out. Trouble happens. We have cases where men and women say they love each other so well, they drink each other's blood to form a covenant that they will never depart from each other. Now you discover that the man you now married is not that person you drank his blood. And that is trouble in that marriage. All because a covenant had been formed and you had violated it. Once you take an oath, you form a covenant. Many have made senseless oaths at ignorant times which have made them to form covenants now that once they violate it, the enemy moves in. Many black people form covenants in Mother Earth. They pour libations on Mother Earth. They dig a hole in the ground, pour water into the ground, put slices of kola nut into it, and they eat one slice of the kola nut. They have formed a covenant with Mother Earth. All of a sudden, they don't know why the land stopped to favor them. Because they violated the covenant they formed with Mother Earth. Let me tell you something here tonight. Anything you are asked to bury in the earth has serious implication for your life. Anything that someone goes to bury on your behalf has serious implications for your life. Any covenant you form using cola nuts, bitter cola, alligator pepper, all those things have a serious implication for your life. In many African countries, it is forbidden to share cola nut with a person and then speak evil of that person. They believe that that cola nut is the blood which is the life of an animal. So if you form that kind of thing, you eat cola nut with somebody, now you go behind the back of the person running the person down, you have violated a covenant and there will be a reaction. So many of the harsh situations we face sometimes is due to this kind of situation in which we find ourselves. Any visit you make to a native doctor forms you into a covenant. Even if you have stopped now, there is a problem. You need to go in and do some covenant breaking. A witch doctor told a family, very strange law. He told them that their father that has just died has made a covenant with the village idol. Anybody who got married in that family must not come out on his wedding day. They must do the wedding inside and everybody remains inside. They can only come out the second day. This brother did his wedding in an Anglican church. He believed that that should be able to cover him. On the night of the wedding, he was at home with his wife. Nobody can explain how a cobra snake appeared between them and the cobra snake attacked this person. He died that same night. The covenant had been violated. The reason we need to pray some serious prayers here tonight is this. Because what I'm talking about tonight is not something you talk, 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 talk too much. The fact is that our forefathers served the devil. They served the enemy. As we are sitting down here tonight, unfortunately, many have up to 30, 20, 30 covenants to break and you are not even aware. No one can tell what this or her parents did to him or her right from the time he was a little baby till he became an adult. The covenant will be formed and problem starts. One sister wanted to get married and she prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. One day she prayed to a particular level and God showed her a revelation. She saw a mother standing. She saw another woman standing. 
she saw herself as a little girl playing with sand and she saw another little boy playing in the sand too in that revelation she saw that her mother and this other woman were saying eh, this is your husband this is your husband they did not know that they were just forming covenants between a young girl that knows nothing it was prayer that now revealed this situation and that is what is happening now you have a covenant already formed and now you are trying to break it going to marry somebody else and now trouble is starting my prayer tonight is this all those who are under unconscious covenant that is presently restricting their movement and restricting their destiny those covenants will be broken tonight in the name of Jesus whenever a covenant is violated plenty of suffering follows the suffering will only cease if you take the following steps number one you need to repent repent from all known sins repent on behalf of yourself and on behalf of anyone who formed that kind of covenant on your behalf that is the first thing number two you must renounce every satanic covenant every negative covenant you have entered to consciously or unconsciously you must renounce them your mouth is the key to your freedom in this matter the Bible says, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. The third thing to do is to nullify the covenant by the blood of Jesus. No covenant or power can stand in the presence of the blood of Jesus when it is applied. Tonight is a night to command every covenant speaking against your life to be silent and cancelled by the blood of Jesus. The fourth operation you have to do at home, you can't do it here. You have to un- you anoint yourself when you get home and command the grip of that covenant to be broken from your life. Then the last thing you now do is to barricade your life so that the enemy does not come to you again with those kinds of things and put you into a fresh covenant again. The enemy is wickedly wicked and badly bad. And sometimes when people come to the house of God, some people pray, they have some relief, and they run away from Jesus, they go back into the world. Sometimes such people come with 21 evil covenants to break. And they pray, pray, pray. They broke 15, remaining 6. So because 15 had been broken out of 21, they have some level of peace. They now go back into the world. The enemy now stages a comeback. And now we will multiply each covenant that the person has lost with seven seven so that it will be so difficult for the person to break free. And herein lies the assignment that the Almighty said we should carry out here tonight. Perhaps we're a little girl or a little boy. And you know that there was a time your parents held parties for you and they were distributing food all over the street for small children. You could remember things that they did that kind of thing for you. And they ate it and went away. But now you notice you're having trouble now moving, moving, making progress in your life. Because all these strange mouths that you fed them, you stop feeding them now. You have violated the covenant. And the steps to it is what we have told you now. Tonight is an assignment. Because to teach these things will take us almost three lectures. I have just summarized for you so you know where we are going here tonight. A lot of people are suffering unnecessarily because of all this violation of covenants that they don't even know anything about. Tonight is a night for serious prayer. If you don't finish the prayers tonight, then you take it home as homework. But we have work to do here tonight. Rise up on your feet and all eyes closed. If you, the Lord brought you here tonight, I really congratulate you. It must be for a purpose. I'm going to start the assignment he asked me to carry out now. But I need your cooperation. The cooperation is that I want your prayer to be like thunder and like fire. And face your own matter, please. Don't worry what is happening. Don't worry about what's happening around you. Focus on your own life. A lot of people make unpardonable mistakes. 
some go into unbelievable errors. Why should this happen? It's because it's violated a rule and trouble is coming. If you are in this meeting tonight and you are the only pastor in your family, or you are the first pastor in your family, you better pray hard. Your forefathers might have entered a covenant that said nobody here can serve any other God. And you may be having serious trouble even in your calling now. You will pray with fire and with thunder. Let your voice thunder into the gates of hell so that the banks of the covenant will be broken open and you completely release yourself and your children and your children's children. All eyes closed. But you see, if you are here tonight, you are not born again, you are not going to surrender your life to Jesus. Whenever you are, just raise up your right hand and say what I'm going to say after. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I come before